Stay all day. Stay all day. You are now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there even when the success you've expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. That is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unifying philosophy that is called work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic, we're gonna go over some sales rules. Yes, these are rules, R-U-L-E-S, rules that you need to understand if you are going to be selling anything. And we are all selling something, so you need to understand these rules. Everybody needs to understand them. And I'll explain to you why we're talking about this in a brief moment. First of all, a message from our sponsors. You are able to get my daily motivation text message, which I send out every single day, free of charge, to everyone who's in my text community. This message is guaranteed to keep you focused, sharp, and on point every single day at the start of your day. You will be mad at yourself when you start getting this message. You'll be mad that you weren't getting it the day before. So all you need to do to text to get it is to text me at my number. It is 305-384-6894. Send me a text at that number right now, 305-384-6894. You'll be getting the daily motivation text every single day, free of charge, straight to your phone. Now, back to our regularly, regularly scheduled program. Now this topic, sales rules. I wanna make sure that I'm laying these things out. We talked about sales so many times here on the show. Episode 2118, Sales Over Skills. Episode 2116, How to Be a True Salesperson. Episode 2115, Are You a Salesperson or an Order Taker? Episode 2093, Everything is Sales. Episode 1928, Why Timid Salespeople Starve to Death. Episode 1896, The Six Phases of the Sales Funnel. Episode 1615, Low Ticket versus High Ticket Sales, Pros and Cons. Episode 1247, Developing Your Sales Mindset. Is that enough? There are more. I'm not going to list them all out here. Episode 947, we talked about selling yourself short. Episode 1573, sell what they want, but give them what they need. Episode 1575, doing the thing versus selling the thing. Episode 1608, how I would create and sell products if I was starting out today. Episode 1613, why victimhood sells. Episode number 1652, the four C's of selling. Episode 1687, 1688, and 1689, Why You Can't Sell to Save Your Life, parts number one, two, and three. Episode 1849, A Framework for Selling Yourself. Episode 1952, The Selling Equation. Should I go on? I will not, but I, just to let you know, just to make sure all of you understand, I ain't new to this. Now, I've been talking about sales a lot here on this show. As you can see, many times, I wrote a book on sales called The Seller's Mindset. You can get it at workonmygame.com slash sell, S-E-L-L. So I want to give you some rules about selling that you need to understand and, and embed into your brain as of today. Definition of sales is the exchange of a commodity for money or the action of selling something. That is the definition of what sales is. Okay, When you're selling anything, you're exchanging a commodity for something else, usually money. Well, we step out of the money side of sales and when you can sell ideas, you can sell yourself, for example, to get a job or to get a date or to get a mate or to make a friend or to make a sports team. You can sell in that way, but we are all always selling. So there are some rules that you need to follow in this game. If you violate these rules, you are violating them at your own peril and you will pay for your mistake. So make sure you follow everything that I say here very specifically. And if you have questions about anything I say here, I gave you my number to text me. It is down below in the show notes. Point number one, topic once again today is sales rules. Number one, first of all, you need to understand the gift and the curse of free, F-R-E-E. -E. Free 99, there's a gift and a curse that comes with free. Here's the good thing about free. Everyone agrees with the price and you can reach anyone when you offer something for free. For example, this show you're listening to right now, I'm not charging you for it, it's free. Everybody agrees with the price of free. There's no one who has a problem with something being free. Is anybody listening to who has a problem with me putting this show out for free? Is there anybody who absolutely demands that I start charging you for this show and you, or you're going to stop listening until or unless I start charging money for the show? Everybody agrees with the price of free. You can reach anybody if you're offering it for free. doesn't mean they're going to do it or take it or use it, but they will at least pay attention because it's free. It's not costing them anything. And if you're good at what you do, 
you can build a sizable audience via free material. I'm pretty good at what I do. I built a sizable audience just through this show here. As a matter of fact, I'm looking up right now. I'm just trying to look up the stats for this show. Uh, I'm not going to take enough time to look up all the stats, but I will tell you that in the year 2021, I already know this number because I looked at it many times. We did over 1.1 million downloads in the year 2021 for the Work On Your Game Masterclass. And I was giving out the show for free the entire year. I built that. That's a pretty sizable audience. I think a million is a pretty sizable number of people to listen to your show. And some of you listen to more than one episode. So having a million listens of a show of anything that you're saying is I would consider that to be pretty sizable. And that's just uh, subjectively me arbitrarily deciding that that number is a lot. And you can build a sizable audience doing it. I have done it many times over. However, here's something you got to understand about free. Some people who are attracted by your free offering, whatever it is, will never, ever, 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 will never ascend above free and may even, this has happened to me as well, they will be offended if and when you ask for money. This is a real thing. This happens. Now, there are some of you here who found me through something that was free. Most of you found me through something that was free. Actually, damn near all of you. Who are listening to this found me through something that was free. Many of you found me through this show right here. It's free. And some of you not only listen to this thing that's free, but you have also exchanged money for something that I offered. All right. You have we have I've consummated a sale through you. We did a transaction. I offered you something, you gave me something. But there are some people in this audience, believe it or not, who if I offered them something for sale for them to buy, they would be offended by the fact that I even offered anything because they found me through free. See, some people, you know how this saying goes, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. See, some people come across you and you're offering something for free and then they get mad if you stop offering them things for free. So you're giving them something and they don't have to give up anything. As soon as you ask them to give up something, they have a problem with it or you because you're asking for something when they're used to getting everything from you without having to give up anything. Some people are, some people just think like this. Now, I'm not saying that they're necessarily bad people. I'm not saying you need to be like them. Actually, I don't want you to become them. You should be the opposite of them. But... There are people who are like this, and I'm not really talking, this is not about me, this is about you. So if you are going to sell, and you want to build an audience, so you give out things free so you can build an audience, that will work. Trust me, it'll work as long as you have some substance, and you got some strategy behind what you're doing. And I have episodes where I explain how to do that. I just gave you a list of like 20. However, understand, there are some people who will never move past free. All right, we call these people the free loaders. What is a freeloader? A person who loads up on free shit. All right, now, a lot of people in life are freeloaders. They will load up on all your free shit. As soon as you ask them for a dollar, they ain't got nothing. They don't know anything. They disappear. You can't find them. So understand that this is going to happen. Be prepared for this. I remember years ago, this is probably maybe 2018, I was writing this, uh, I would write an email every day. I called it the Daily Game. And I was literally writing an email every single day, sending out to everybody on my list that day when I wrote it. And this is, I don't do it, I don't write my articles that way anymore. I got all of you in a, in, in a sequence of emails. So not all of you are getting the same emails from me every single day. It depends on when you came in and how long you've been around. And I got like thousands of articles written, so I'm never going to run out. You're always going to get more material from me, but not everybody's at the same spot. But I remember I was writing this daily game and I wrote it for like three months every single day. I'm writing an email and people are liking it. And one day I put in my email, hey, well, how would y'all like it if I started... Uh, how would you how would you feel or how would you respond if I start charging for this? So I charge something minimal, like five dollars a month. Five dollars a month. Or it's thirty days in a month. I'm gonna charge five dollars a month. So you do the math on how much that it actually is per day. You know, how would you feel if I start doing that? And there was this one person who wrote me back and they said, Well, a bunch of people wrote me back, but one person wrote back and he said the following. He said, Dre, I don't like the fact that you would start charging for something that used to be free. Alright, this is the mindset of a freeloader. Right, this is what a freeloader does. They complain that you're going to charge for something that was free. Now, like I said, I didn't say $500. I didn't say $5,000. I said $5. Yes, one, two, three, four, five. Like the fingers on your hand. $5 a month. And this person complained. And I hadn't even started charging for it yet. Believe it or not. Can you believe that? Believe it because it happens. All right, I'm not telling you not to do things for free. I just want to make sure you understand. Because listen, I put out more free material than anybody. 
I just want to make sure you understand that this will happen. You're going to get some people who complain and bitch because you are charging for anything because they want everything for free. These are the freeloaders. You got to understand who they are. You got to keep them in the mental box that they belong in and understand that they do not represent the whole of your audience. And also you better emotionally understand you cannot uh, take care of your food, clothing and shelter by serving freeloaders. All right. Anybody was anybody unclear on that before I just said it? Good. This is the part of the game that you're in if you decide to come in the game this way that you're going to have to deal with some of these folks. Point number two. Today's topic, once again, is some sales rules. Number two, you will never receive more than you are willing to ask for. And if you do, you won't do it. It won't happen again. Consider it luck. All right. Get on your knees and pray to God. Pray to your heart. Pray to your higher being, whoever it is, if you ever receive more than you asked for in any situation involving sales. In sales, you get what you ask for. The ceiling on what you can receive in sales is based on what you are willing to ask for in sales. If you're not willing to ask for $10, you ain't getting $10. If you ask for 10, you might end up with eight, but you can never get 11 if you're only asking for 10. And if you do get 11, you got lucky. It will not keep happening. Everybody follow me? While it will be great for all of us, it would be great to all of us if someone just ran up to you and just handed you everything that you wanted in life, or at least everything you think you want, in life, most of the time you will have to either ask for or negotiate for or demand the things that you want in life or maybe take it in some way, shape or form. Most of the time it's not just going to be handed to you, even though in our in our dreams, when we're daydreaming, we all wish that somebody would just run up to and just give us everything that we want in life. Usually that doesn't happen. I mean, think about it. How old are you? Take your age, multiply it by 365. That's how many number of days you've been alive. So let's say if you're relatively young, you're 21 years old. And that means if you're 21 years old right now, that means you've been alive for at least 7,665 days. That's not counting leap years and that's not counting all the days between your 21st birthday and when you get to birthday 22. We haven't even added those days in. Over 7,000 days. How many times in those 7,665 days have you had a person come up to you and force upon you all the things that you wanted, but you never actually expressed that you wanted them. You never asked for them. You never demanded them. You never negotiated for them. You didn't do anything to actually make this happen, but someone came up to you and just gave it to you. You've been alive for 7,665 days. How many times has that occurred? Probably none, right? And if it's happened to any of you, probably only once. It's like getting struck by lightning. So if you're not willing to ask for it, you shouldn't be expecting to get it. I remember I was talking to an entrepreneur a few years ago. I am having a conversation with this person and we were discussing just what they were doing with their business and their prospects moving forward and all these things that they wanted to do. This person has some skills and it has some, some value, some game to offer the world. They just didn't have a lot of structure and organization to what they were doing. I said to this person, okay, if we were, we were talking a little bit about the minutia of the things they wanted to do and I say, Yo, you need to do this, 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 this. And I said to this person, all right, how much money if you were to execute on all this stuff that I'm talking to you about and you, know, you did it and you get it working, how much money would you want to make in a year? How much money do you want to earn in a year? And this person threw out a number like $125,000 a year. It was something around that amount. Here's the thing. And here's something that I knew to be true about this person then is that they were not making enough offers of the thing that they were selling that even if every single person who saw it said yes, they would not make even half of $125,000 a year. So while I'm not knocking them for having the desire to earn $125,000 a year, this is their number. They, I asked them for a number, that's the number they threw out. How are you gonna make 125K if you're not even making enough offers to earn it? Even if every single person who saw what you're selling said yes and bought it, it would not add up to $125,000. It makes no sense. So you, the reason I'm telling you that story is to tell you this, you have to put yourself in line with receiving the things that you want. So are you putting yourself in line for actually receiving what you want? So if you want, if you're a personal trainer and you want your clients to pay you $200 per session, then you have to actually charge $200 per session. Is that a mystery to anybody? Is, is, that, is, is anyone unfamiliar with that math? Anybody unfamiliar with that? If you go to a job interview, you want the job to pay you 80 grand a year. When they ask you, what are your salary expectations? Then you better say a number that is at least 80 grand a year. They're not going to give you 80 if you ask for 70. 
Right, this is the way life and the world works, folks. You must ask for what you want. Or if you want to be a negotiator, ask for more than what you want. Maybe they'll say yes to it. And worst case scenario, you get less than what you asked for, but what is less than what you asked for might still be higher than the number that you actually had in your head. I'll give you another example. I was talking to a business colleague of mine years ago, and they were telling me the story of how they had started a business. This is before I knew them. And they were telling me how they had started a business and they put together this whole business plan and project plan and they were actually doing it as like an, an assignment for school or something that they were doing it wasn't even a real thing they were going to do but they put this whole thing together and they presented it to this company and they were thinking about how much they were going to ask for as far as the like a project plan and they were first thinking uh, 300,000, they wanted the 600,000, then they said, you know what, forget it, this is just a project, let's have fun, let's just ask for a million dollars. So they did, they asked for a million dollars, they went and did the whole uh, presentation and proposal and all of that, and the business people who they were presenting to didn't know that they were kind of just playing around and joking, and they actually said yes, they ended up getting the million dollars, and they actually started a business when they weren't even planning to start a business. The point being, you must ask for what you wish to receive. We talked about this in a Levels of Money Earning episode, episode 100, 915. So if you haven't listened to that one, that's another one when it comes to sales, all the episodes on selling and money. If you want to see the full podcast episode list of this show, go to workonyourgamepodcast.com, by the way, as I get people who reach out to me every week and say, well, Dre, I'm trying to listen to some of the old episodes you reference, but I don't see them in Spotify. I don't see them in Apple. Well, that's because Spotify and Apple don't have the capacity to hold all the game that I'm giving you here. So... They probably only load like maybe the last 500 or 600 or 1,000 episodes, but we have over 2,000. So go to workonyourgamepodcast.com. Everybody heard me? Workonyourgamepodcast.com, where we list every episode in the history of the show. So if you want to make more, if you want to make X dollars, whatever that number is, you, you fill in X, you need to be asking for at least X. And ideally, here's what I would suggest, ask for 10X and be able to justify it in case you miss all right, in case you come up short, and let's say you only end up with 5x. All right, is that, are you getting at least x? Yes, you are. So here's a si simple litmus test for you. Ask yourself how much you think you are worth, and then compare that to how much you're asking for. This is a, this is a, a come to Jesus moment that you have with yourself right here. Let me give it to you again. So all you can try this at home. Ask yourself how much you think you are worth in terms of marketplace value, how much you should be earning, and then ask yourself how much you have been asking for. And then ask yourself why those numbers don't match. How will you ever realize your worth if you're not asking for that amount or you haven't figured out the arithmetic for getting it? That is a rhetorical question from me to you. It is not a rhetorical question from you to you. Point number three. Today's topic, once again, is some rules about selling. Number three, you gotta get your mind right around the concept of money. I did a whole episode about getting your mind right around the concept of money. That was episode number 2111, just a few weeks ago. So go listen to episode 2111. If you haven't already, it is listed down below in the show notes and everything is at workonyourgamepodcast.com. Selling is all about the exchange. It means, and usually it's an exchange of a product or service that's on your side in exchange for somebody's money. That's the person who is buying from you. If your mind is not right around the concept of money, even if you have an amazing product, you will limit your ability to sell even when your product or service is very good. And you have an audience of people who want to buy it. I have seen this happen many times over. I've known many entrepreneurs who had a great product or service, but because they didn't have their mind right around money, they were undervaluing themselves, thus underselling themselves, and then frustrated because they weren't making the kind of money that they wanted to make, even though there was nothing wrong with their product, and they had customers who wanted to buy from them, but they weren't willing to ask for what they wanted because of their mindset around money. So episode 2111 is uh, critically important for any of you who has any type of negative money mindset. And how you'll know you have a negative money mindset, look at the humans or the adults that raised you. If they have negative mindsets around money, and usually you can identify this by the fact that they don't have any money, then you need to check yourself because you probably inherited their mentalities and don't even realize it. So again, that's episode 2111. If you already listened to it, go listen to it again. All right, get your mind right around this concept of money is probably one of the most important things you can do for yourself. I know a lot of good practitioners and salespeople who have great products, willing audiences, yet are unable to produce the type of revenue that they could be producing or that they want to be producing. Notice I didn't say deserve to be producing, but could be or want to be simply because they don't have their minds right around money. 
So my question is, do you actually believe that your product or service is really worth what you're asking for? Do you believe that what you're asking for is, do you believe that what you are offering is worth what you're asking for? Ideally, give you a little, a little bit of help here. What you ask, the amount that you ask for in money should be less than what you're actually giving people. You should be giving people 10 times what you ask for in, in uh, money, in price. So if you're offering something that costs $100, you should be giving people $1,000 worth of value, at least. That way, it becomes an offer that they can't refuse. That way, they're like, all right, I, I'm, my, I'm only mildly interested in this, but the value is so high that I gotta take it. All right, that's the, kind of, that's the way that you wanna be making your offers. I did a training in my Bulletproof Mastermind where I explained this in detail. If you join the Mastermind, I'm going to work on your game university.com. You can see that training and you'll understand this on an even deeper level, but I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Are you willing to say out loud how much you want to charge for your thing? I was talking to someone actually in my Bulletproof Mastermind not too long ago, and they are in a service-based business and they were offering X for their service per session, per client. And I said, well, why don't you start charging four times that per client? And I gave them some logical justifications as to why they should be charging more money. And they said, well, yeah, that would be great if I can make that much more per client because I mean, it's four times what they're already making. Who wouldn't, who would say no to that? And they said, yeah, that would be great. But the problem is this person hasn't listened to episode 2111 because they had some very, very unhealthy money mindsets or very unhealthy money mindset that's keeping them from asking for what they actually want. And unfortunately, last that I heard, last time that I checked, maybe things have changed. This person is still not charging 4X for their thing. They were already charging X. I said charge 4X. They're not charging 4X yet. They went up a little bit, but they didn't go up as high as I told them to. And that, that uncoachability is going to keep them held back until they decide to change. There's only so much that I can say. They got to decide to change. So whatever number you want, you got to be willing to say it all out. All right, you want to charge... If you're a, a barber and you want to charge $50 for a haircut, are you willing to say out loud, a, a haircut is $50? Can you actually say the words like I just said? Are you willing to ask for what you want? Because nobody's going to just give it to you. Are you willing to accept it if someone's willing to give it to you? Because they'll take it back <laughs> when it comes to money. This sounds like very simple ideas, right? Very trite questions. But you may be surprised to find that many salespeople have challenges with these questions. Many people have problems saying these things out loud to themselves. And I hear from these people all the time, but that's why I started my mastermind to help people out who have this problem. If it's you, if you're one of those people, then I'm gonna tell you in a minute how I can help you out and where to go and how we can get started. But before we do that, let's recap today's class, which is some rules about sales. The definition of sales, the exchange of a commodity for money, the action of selling something. Point number one, the gift and the curse of free. Everyone agrees to the price of free. You can build a sizable audience with free, but you're going to attract some freeloaders who want everything free forever, and they will resent you forever wanting to make money from what you offer. So be careful with free. Understand that you are attracting a certain class of individual. Point number two, you will never receive more than you're willing to ask for. While it will be great for some of us, for someone to just demand, give you everything that you want, and you don't even have to ask for it. You must be willing to ask for, demand, or negotiate for the things that you actually want. We talked about this in episode 915. There's only three ways that people make money, and none of them is people just hand it to you. Right? That's not one of the three ways that people make money. How will you realize your worth if you're not asking for the amount that you want or you haven't figured out the math for actually getting to what you want? And point number three, get your mind right around money. Selling is about an exchange. Usually you have a product or a service in exchange for somebody's money, if you have a great product or service, but you don't have a healthy money mindset, you will chase away the money that should be going in your pocket. So you have to not only have something of value to offer people, got to be willing to grab people's attention. You must be willing to ask for what you want, now, not what you deserve. There is no deserving. You only deserve things when you have them. So the question is, do you actually believe that your product or service is worth what you're asking for? It should be worth 10 times what you're asking for. So you're giving them a discount when you sell something to somebody. These sound like simple ideas, but you may be surprised to find that many salespeople who they, and they call themselves salespeople have challenges with these questions. They are slowing them down and keeping them from getting to what they want to get to in life and also keeping the buyers from being able to buy things because certain buyers are not going to buy things below a certain level because they are going to judge it as not being valuable, not being worth it. So this is a perpetuating cycle that actually hurts everybody in the process. So this is why you got to get your mind right around these, all of these concepts. So three things I want you to do right now. Number one, 
I want you to get my daily motivation text by texting me at my number 305-384-6894. Number two, I want you to get my Bulletproof Bulletin magazine that I send out physically to your mailbox every single month. I'll give you your first issue free by going to bulletproofbulletin.com. And number three, I want you to join my Bulletproof Mastermind. That's where I will work with you directly on your mindsets around money, around success, around strategy, around discipline, around confidence, everything in between. We're going to take complex challenges that you're dealing with right now. I'm going to simplify them, make them easy for you to attack and handle. And doing all this, we are going to blend your personal growth and your professional growth into one big conversation. That is my skills, my money skills, one of my money skills. I'm going to do all that for you inside the Bulletproof Mastermind. You can join by going to workonyourgameuniversity.com right now. Work on your game. Dre all day.